Hello, in this part we will continue with cues. In this exercise I will prepare an example where we will have two senders and one receiver. So I'm starting with stm 42 cube ide but you can use as well stm 42 cube mix and your selected toolchain. So starting from stm 42 cube ide I will create a new project, so file new stm 42 project. I will select my microcontroller L476RG which is located on Nucleo L476RG board which we are using within this training but you can easily use any different STM32 based board for your exercises so I press next name of my exercise example would be free underscore cues underscore two underscore senders and I press finish okay after a while I can see the empty pinout of my selected microcontroller uh, you can reuse any of uh, previous exercises as well here but uh, just for those of you who started uh, with us uh, within this part I will just briefly repeat all main steps so within system and core and sys uh, section I'm selecting the debug interface to trace asynchronous SW to have three lines uh, so standard SWD plus SWO so single wire output which is used in our case to make the communication between the board and um, one of the terminals to display the messages uh, from the tasks next point is uh, to select the different time based source for HAL libraries by default it is SysTick and uh, as SysTick is used for FreeRT OS and uh, the best practice is not to share it uh, with other functions so I'm selecting time base source to um, forwarding it to timer 6 which is um, standard uh, time base timer without any input nor output channels so this is the first step the second uh, step in our case uh, would be to add them in within the middlewares freer ties we are selecting CMC's v2 as it is much more let's say, extended and then within this uh, CMC's v2 we will add three tasks one is already defined so we'll just rename it by double click and uh, I'm changing its name to for example sender one as priority normal I would keep then the stack size I would extend to 256 words this is important and the entry function would be start sender one the rest I would keep default then uh, we need uh, two more tasks so I click add within tasks and queues and the task section and uh, if I would click add I have a next window for next task uh, so next second task would be sender 2 priority would be the same so normal 256 as uh, stack size in words and uh, the entry function would be start sender 2 okay and uh, the third task is a receiver so again uh, add the button then receiver uh, OS priority normal 256 words and uh, entry function it would be start receiver that's it so we've got three tasks and we would need uh, as well one queue uh, so I go within queues tab and I add one queue so my queue have a name q1 uh, it will be eight components long and each component should be a bit unsigned type and that's it we've got new components within our free RTS and please have a look we've got some warning message on free RTS middleware and uh, it is present as well within free RTS heap usage so most probably we are over our limit and total heap used is 3500 so it's a bit more than we declared 
Uh, so we need to go to config parameters and extend our heap size from 3000 bytes in this time to, for example, 4000. Now we can see that everything is corrected. After those operations, uh, we can generate the code either using this button or going via project and generate code. OK, main.c file should be opened automatically. If not, we can find it within core, source and main.c. Within main.c file, we can see some header files which are included. So main.h file contains, for example, the definitions of the labels of the pins and cmc's underscore os contains, uh, let's say, the interfaces, name the declarations of the, of the functions and macros used within cmc's os layer which we are using within this uh, complete training. Below we can see the definition of the handlers of selected of our tasks. So sender1 handle, sender2 handle and receiver handle and as well the handler for our Q1. There are as well attributes for each of them. So those are let's say the part of attributes. The rest uh, uh, with the pointers to the memory structures like uh, control blocks and uh, private stacks would be defined upon the creation of those components later on. If we go below uh, within main uh, function we can see the standard hardware initialization uh, starting uh, with uh, hal underscore init function, then configuration of the system clock uh, using system clock config function, and then from the peripherals we are using only GPIOs. This is why we've got only mx underscore GPIO init function. Just below there is an initialization, the memory allocation of for the operating system and below this we can see the creation of operating system components starting from the queue then three tasks and uh, after this uh, on line 160 in my case there is os kernel start which is starting the operating system if we go below uh, we can see the entry functions for our tasks and here we would uh, need to add some coding OK, so let's continue with the uh, code processing. Uh, we'll start from uh, sender1 uh, entry function. At the moment, uh, there is only OS delay for one millisecond. So we will start with something different. Before our endless loop uh, within this task, we will create local variable as simple as possible. So it will be ADB to unsigned. I will name it x and initial value 1. And we will use this value to pass it to the queue from this particular task. So I would start my endless loop with a sign of life. So in my case, it is sending a simple sign over selected interface. In uh, all of the exercises uh, within this uh, training, we are using SWO line, so over instrumentation trace macro cell interface, we are sending the data which are synchronized with the system clock. I would demonstrate uh, in, in a while uh, how this task action looks like in our case, but uh, you can define it on your site uh, differently. Uh, so this is our sign of life, just to display something from the task. Then I would try to um, send some data to the queue. So I would uh, start a message queue, control space, and I would like to put some data over the queue. If I press control space, I can see that there is queue handle. Then there is a pointer to the data. So in our case, this is, I would put address for this X uh, value. Priority is not used here. So I put zero and timeout. This is the time which would be used for the system, for the task, in fact, to send those data to the queue. After this, uh, if it will be not successful, the function will return um, some or error value, so negative value, and it will continue execution. Then OS delay. OS delay I would increase here to two seconds. So after sending data to the queue, we will send this task to the blocked state for two seconds. So this would be sender1 code and for sender2 it will be almost the same. The only difference would be that this local variable would be equal to 2. So I would just do copy pasting and the rest is almost the same. 
Another difference is power sign of life. So instead of small s, I would send big S for sender two. And uh, the last point is to specify to fill the receiver code. So we need to have as well data which are taken from the queue. By default, it's zero. Then a sign of life. Big R from receiver. And then we'll try to, to read something from the queue. So it will be OS message queue get. So the first argument is a handle. The second argument is a pointer to the message. So it will be our address of our local variable. The priority is not used. So I would put null and timeout. I would try to do this for seconds. Important is to execute below code only in case it was let's say successful to get anything from the queue. So only in this case, I would perform another task action to display what I just received plus 48. In this case, we will send to our terminal either one or two in ASCII code. After this, I would send this task for two seconds to blocked state. Okay, and this is our code. So let's uh, define now this task action code. Okay, so our task action code will locate within this user code section four. It will return nothing. So it will be void type task action and it would accept one char variable, one byte. Then we would uh, send send one character so it will be our message and sign of new line okay so it will send one signed and uh, sign of new line so in the terminal we should see messages from our queues one after one in uh, each one in a new line and just to have everything correct i need a prototype uh, within user section as well so this private function prototypes over here and we can test our code so now i would try to build it my board is already connected. Okay, code is built. We will start the debug session. Okay, so let's start the debug session. I'm clicking this bug icon. Just to have a look whether everything is correct. I'm just enable the serial, serial wire viewer and correct the clock to 4 MHz, which is used in our example. SWD, yes, we can apply and start a debug session. Okay, uh, before we run the code, I would just start uh, my ITM data console. In case you don't know how to start it, please go to access and select SWV interface and uh, select this ITM data console this with the monitor on the left side as an icon. Uh, once you select it, you need to configure it. So configure trace and select bit zero, which is in our case SWO line, it is PB3 pin. And then once you're ready, you can start tracing using this bullet icon and you can start your code. can see the time delay, it's quite long, I would pause it. And uh, if we 
if we analyze what is happening. The first has been run the receiver task, then there was a sender 1 and sender 2. There is a difference with above, let's say, S size. After this, a uh, receiver was, uh, let's say, executing the code once again, so we can see the one coming from first sender who sent because it was the first component uh, so uh, receiver during its time displayed uh, this message from the queue and then the time of uh, receiver ends up and sender one has been selected as for the second time so we can see sender then again receiver has been selected and then receiver displayed the second component from the queue which was sent by sender two so this is number two. As you can see, in this particular example, it is important to define precisely the timeouts, which we will use uh, for our code execution. Please have a look that both tasks, sender1 and sender2, are sent after sending the data to the queue for two seconds into the blocked state. Then receiver is waiting two seconds. Uh, two seconds in a blocked state as well. So it may happen that now let's say the, the timing bit among those uh, three tasks will not be perfect. So always please remember about the timings among the tasks and uh, the timeout which is specified within the queue get or queue put. We can finish this exercise here. So thank you for watching this video. In next video we will analyze the situation when the queue, the receiver task has higher priority than both senders.